Welcome again to Grace Believer's Bible Study. We want to thank everyone for showing up, being here, to hear the Word of God, rightly divided. It's, you know, that's kind of a misnomer of, of what I said, but it's rightly dividing the word truth. I, I was reading yesterday on Facebook, and, and, and I get so irritated, I may have to shut it off. I'm really irritated. I'm sorry. And he's from Tennessee, Jerry. Yeah. Jerry's from Chattanooga. All right. <laughs> but anyway, welcome. Welcome back. Tony and his wife over there. We're glad you're here. <laughs> Sheila. Well, hey, whenever I address myself as me and my wife, what's wrong with it? Is anything wrong with it? No. The man is the head of the household. Man. I was just getting that straight. He doesn't make decisions. He's the head. He don't make the decisions. <laughs> a buddy of mine said one time, he said, you know, I said, are you the head of the household? He said, uh, he said, she she makes she she makes me think that I am. Yeah. She lets me yeah. whatever. Well anyway, this morning, uh, we want to be praying for Herma's uh, daughter. She's in the hospital. Just 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 pray for the God's will to be done there. Other people. Anybody, Jim, you got Aaron Peterson. What's his name again? It's a lady, Tara Peterson. Tara Peterson. There's a there's a, a girl up in uh, Chattanooga, uh, Ruth Gordon Stevenson, I think is her name. She just uh, day before yesterday she had an operation. She had a brain tumor. So they now they operated on her. So just just be praying for God's will. Because see, the scripture tells us we don't know what to pray for, and we don't. I pray for things uh, that uh, anything you pray for before you get saved is not going to come to pass. Mm. <laughs> I pray to the help brother come to pass, and I'm out of the will of the Father. So, uh, once you trust that and that alone, you're sealed until the day of redemption. We're going to cover a lot. Patience. Whatever we need, okay? And. The message this week, I, well, I messed around with different ideas all week long, tried to tell you how to go. And Thanksgiving, after eating a huge Thanksgiving meal, which I way over ate, this kind of came to me. And um, I put this together, you know, different pieces I had. And it's about spiritual maturity and what that means. So it came over, and we enjoyed that. But it's very easy sometimes, with all that pressure and all that busyness, to lose focus on the joy. Of your relationship with God. And so I want to focus on here is on the joy and about Christian maturity and spiritual maturity. So let's begin with the first paragraph here. Those go, we'll, we'll get into some of this as we go through it. For far too long, the church has con, uh, confused spiritual maturity with works and performance. In other words, if you do this and you do this and you do this, you're a mature Christian. But, yeah, exactly. But wow, what a miserable place people find themselves in. Many people feel that if they are doing the work of the Lord, they are mature in Christ. That's what the modern church is. The modern church will say, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And to, to win favor with God, to be a mature Christian. If you're going to be a mature Christian, you better perform on these levels or whatever it may be. However, it's far from the truth, especially if performance is an individual focus. That's not to say we don't do good works, but we must do them from the right focus. We must have the right motivation as ambassadors for Christ. Um, trying to wake up. We must have a firm understanding of grace and conduct ourselves with the right attitude and commitment. In addition, we must be careful to be sure that we are teaching the right spiritual knowledge. Very, very important. Based on grace and rightly dividing the word. Let's have somebody, if you would, read 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 15. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builder set on. So let every man take heed how he builds it at home. Go ahead, I'll wait for this. For other foundations, no man lay them. That is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the lost the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself. Shall be saved so 
What is this talking about? To a lot of people, it's about the Tomato religion. I believe they believe they believe it to be about performance. Do this, do this, do this, do this. Look, at I'm keeping these scores. I've done this, I've done this. I believe it's about the right motivation. I believe this talks about doing things for God out of the right motivation, and those things are going to survive. Those things are going to be there because they had the right intent. Those things are going to be around when everything else gets gone, burned away or whatever. The intent of how we focus on what we do for God is the maturity aspect that somebody do, that most Christians fail to understand. They're all about stacking up the numbers and keeping track of things as opposed to understanding their relationship to God and doing it from the right motivation. Okay? It's the right thing to do. I say that all the time when I get a chance to do something for people. They go, what's this one? Why are you doing it? It's the right thing to do. I have a, I'm at peace with my creator. That's the answer. It's the right thing to do. Look at the blessings we've all got. We're going to get into this, this study. Look at how wonderful we are. If we've accepted not just the death, burial, and resurrection, but that that resurrection is our justification. Very important. Everybody knows the top three. But that resurrection, resurrection is our justification. And we are justified in God's eyes, and we are perfect in God's eyes, and we are in the body of Christ, and we stand perfected before God, and he sees us through Jesus. And guess what? I am perfect regardless of the one or two mistakes I made the last three or four days. <laughs> <laughs> you may forget. Oh, thank you. So true, though. But understand that, and then your motivation shifts. Our foundation must be Jesus Christ with a backbone of grace that was revealed to who? The Apostle Paul. Revolutionary stuff. The modern church does not understand it. When you share it with your friends, they're going to tell you you're crazy. I've written some books on it, and my sister-in-law told me one time, this is theological stuff. It's way too hard to understand. <laughs> and it was a simple truth. But they don't want to see it because they've been so bombarded over the years. Our message must reflect the unconditional love God has for us. Let's take a look at that here. Not our performances. From his name, we will one back. Yet, privilegium for, huh? for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than this, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were his enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, which more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And oh, that's the yeah, end. That's what it is. Paul lays it out pretty well. Look, look, look what verse 9 says. Much more than being now justified by his blood. Not justified by my performance. Not justified by my creed or my denomination or the money or whatever else you might want to put into religion that exists. It was the blood of Christ. And it was his faithfulness in carrying out. And they think the rule out when I do that. So maybe it's just the center <laughs> It was his faithfulness in carrying out what had to be done that saves us. We accept that. We participate with that, and our salvation happens. But much more than salvation, when we participate with that, we have the peace. We have the love. We have a position in Christ that supersedes anything in the world. And no matter what difficulties you're going through, everyone's got a daughter in the hospital, we have work problems, we have this, we have that. Everybody's got situations going on. When you step back from that for a moment, take a deep breath, we live in our, in our spiritual history, our spiritual future, and our position in Christ is unbelievable. Okay? When was the last time you closed your eyes and thought about that for even 30 seconds? We're all so busy, it doesn't happen, does it? We're going and going and going. We've got to get this done. we got to get that done. Get this done. Yeah, it's amazing, okay? This is grace, a gift that we did not earn, okay? Romans chapter 4, verses 4 to 5, real quickly. That again, that work it is the reward not reckoned with grace, but a debt, or of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Where are you looking? Okay? To him that worketh not, the reward is not reckoned with grace, but of debt. And, and people out there who might be seeing this in the internet, if you're focused on performance, if you're focused on being good enough for God, you're never going to get there. Because you can't be. Done deal, no matter what you do. Religion says, do all this kind of stuff, and you're going to be great, you'll be okay, you'll be okay. You won't be okay. We had a conversation in the car today. 
Knowing that Christ died, buried, and resurrected is not going to save you. It's letting that, that faithfulness of Christ be your salvation. Him carrying that out, you accepting that, it becomes your justification. Justification is so important that people drop that out. Look at the first five. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Is that our faith or Christ's faith? Okay. Christ's faith was counted for righteousness. We accept that. It's a very simple process, but it is very difficult because to do that, you have to get your ego out of the way, don't you? It's no longer me. It's no longer the wonderful things I do. I mean, it's how... It's tough to be perfect. Ask her. I, I do my best at it, you know? Uh, she's um, yeah, shaking her head, okay? <laughs> but the point is, yes, thank you. Make me feel good. Thank you. But it's Christ. It's not us, okay? We need to always stay focused there. And then when you're doing things, i.e. godly things, do them for the right reason. Do them because of the position you've already been given. I've often used this example. When I have young kids, do I want them to keep their room clean? Because if they don't, I'm going to spank them? Or do I want them to keep the room clean because of all the wonderful things I've done? I've given them these rooms. I've given them these toys. I've given, where's the motivation? Okay, Where do we need to be? We don't need to perform out of fear. We need to perform out of thankfulness. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to do this. You know, look for those opportunities in your life. It makes a huge difference when your focus is in the right place. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 19 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Okay, they're gone. They're history. You do this, you begin a process that will rob you of your peace and joy in Christ. Yeah. How many of us know people who are very religious, but boy, they are pretty miserable? Yeah. How many of you went down that road, huh? Yeah, before she understood, the shower bills were horrendous. She, she, she prayed in the shower in the morning, and the power, and the, I had to get my shower first, it was going to be cold. Done. You have to get in there before, you had to beat her into the shower, or you're going to be cold. She was washing away her sins. She was. She was working at it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you focus off of grace and the love of God, you will be disconnected and uneasy in your life. You've all been there. Even when you understand dispensational truth and you accept its justification and you fall out of the will of God because you're busy in your worldliness, does it, in the end, is there joy? Nah. It's temporal. Okay. In the end, you feel how? Yeah. Absolutely. Talk about living within God's road of path of, of joy. I've been there and I've also been way off in the woods. When you're way off in the woods, it's no fun. You come back and God goes, Hey, man, good to see you again. <laughs> I mean, he does. You know, he doesn't say, you fool, now you got to pay a price. He goes, hey, where have you been? Um, what a great place to be. Yes. Sir, I was, as soon as you started this thing, I, I followed Matthew chapter 7 right away. And mm -hmm. when Jesus is speaking about religious people, he's talking about pushing through the work. He says, not everyone that says I'm being more worship than the king of heaven. He that doeth the will of my father. Then he will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils, and uh, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then I will confess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Yep. And, you are yep. and then obviously the kingdom message, but today in the body of Christ. Are you in that body of Christ? Yeah. <clears throat> if you're not in that body of Christ, guess what? He's going to say, Who are you? What's the story here? And how many of our friends and our children, we were talking about that in the car, know the first three, don't understand the fourth? It's a heavy burden. How do we get them? You know what I mean? We have to constantly work at it. We have to hope that the Lord sees at one point that they might see, I should say, we just plant that. I truly believe, back to my paper here, I truly believe we were meant to both experience and deliver love and joy to this world. That's what we're here for. <clears throat> if we're not experiencing this in our lives, our focus is not in the right place. If you're going to get anybody to listen to you about your salvation and, and share your testimony, it's going to be because they're going to be surprised at how wonderful and nice you are. They're going to say, wow, what do you do this for? Why do you look this way? Why do you act this way rather? Why do you, because, I mean, I always use the line, because I'm at peace with my creator. Mm. And if they want to know more, the conversation opens up. Mm. That's a great conversation. <clears throat> with lots of clients who are Christians who may not have totally understood this until I got into it. Okay? I'm at peace with my creator, and I am. I'm at peace with my creator. When I go to bed at night, I close my eyes, it's done. 
I have nothing to fear. I have no worries. I have no concerns. This is a temporal thing. I'm, of course, you know, 35 now. You know, I'm getting older, but yeah. And, and, and as we get older, the point is, I'm not going to be here for another 30 years. Okay? I'll be gone. But you know what? I'm going to be in a better place. Or I'm going to put something on her Facebook. You know, all we are is walking, holding each other's hand, trying to. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Nobody? For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Boy, we need to focus on that, especially at times of the year when we're really busy, going crazy. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Dave, back on um, on 14, 17, uh, what's well, a very important thing is for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. In other words, it's not physical. It's a spiritual thing. Meat and drink is physical. But it's a spiritual thing. And it's a spiritual position where you see that the right hand of God, if you're, if you're a saved believer, okay? If you've been reconciled, justified, we're seated at the right hand of God. Ephesians, or Galatians chapter 5, now here we go. This one spells it all out. And this is where we need to be, and not all of us can be here. Some of the time, I'm certainly not some of these. Let's go to Galatians 5, chapter 22. Chapter 5, verse 22. Like the fruit of the Spirit. Is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. How many of you are good at that long suffering thing, huh? <laughs> Patient with the folks who just, you know, as I get older, that long suffering gets shorter. Yeah. You know, I got to work out. You know what I mean? I, I'm going to die soon. I can't wait for these people at the counter. <laughs> my, you know, I'm 65 minutes later for a cheeseburger or something. It's just, anyway, the whole point is that's where our focus needs to be. Love, you know, joy. <laughs> Peace, long suffering, gentleness. We can all be gentle. That means gentleness with the people who don't believe, who come to you and accuse you, uh, who come to you and tell you you're crazy, who come to you and say, as Irma did when I was first introducing her to Grace, there is no way that can be. That's crazy. That just gives you guys a license to sin. Oh my God. The lectures I got coming home from some of the Bible conferences went on for hours, and I had to be gentle. I had to go. <laughs> <laughs> Long suffering, yeah, okay. That means the friends and family that we know, who we're trying to reach. I know Richard goes through this with people he works with a lot. Long suffering, be patient, wait, wait, keep giving it, keep sharing your thoughts, keep sharing your ideas, keep sharing your knowledge, and let God handle it. Okay. As men, we want to solve all the problems of the world. When I have a problem, I just want to solve it. I'm going to pray about it. I'm just going to solve it. You know. And then when it doesn't get solved, maybe after about 40 attempts. I might get around to praying, okay? But um, prayer is certainly not the first thing I do. It needs to be, but it isn't, okay? It's probably the last thing I get around to after I've failed a million times. Now. Important. But these are things that we can address in our lives that will give us that joy, okay? When we focus in the right place, when we focus for the right reasons, when we do things for the right reasons, guess what? Life is not so tough. Life is not so tough. Okay? Sure, we have ailments. Sure, we have problems. Sure, we have this. Sure, we have that. But life is not so tough because you know what? What have we been given? What, what have we slowed down enough to just think about the joy, the peace, the position we've been given, especially this time of year? That's what we're supposed to focus on. It's Christmas, right? Even though Christmas is born in September, that's not important. It's Christmas season. <laughs> okay? So let's get focused correctly. First Thessalonians 1 6. Somebody? And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Look at that says at the very beginning. You became followers of us and oh, of the Lord. If you don't rightly divide your Bible and understand the dispensation of truths that are there, you're going to have a difficult time because there's going to be a lot of conflicts. And when there's conflicts, there's anxiety. There's, I don't understand. I don't know what's going on. It doesn't make sense. I can't clear this up. What's happening? And you're not going to have joy. Okay? You're going to be misled by people who say, oh, you've got to do this and this. I mean, that's what religion is based on. You know, here are the ten things you got to do to be a Baptist. 
Here are the 28 things you got to do to be a Presbyterian. Here are the six things you got to do to be a Methodist, whatever it might be. None of them have anything to do with spirituality. Mm. They have to do with religion, and they have to do with, you know, tradition. Our tradition is this, so that's the way it is. Okay. And people live in angst, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. And people live full of angst because they want to connect to their creator, and they're not getting it here. They're not getting it here. They're not getting it here because they tried to mix it all together. And when you do that, you cannot come up with a way of combination. You know, it's impossible. We need to be aware of that. Even when we are in troubled times, even when all seems to not be going away, we can see things in a positive light. This understanding is what spiritual maturity brings. That spiritual maturity comes through study, through being in a class like this, through spending time looking at things. We don't study our Bible as much as we should, or not. We keep talking about it. We get around to it. We look at a few things. We do this here and there. I study when I put together this message, but although I'm so busy, I don't be study. What's that? You know, I don't keep, I don't do it the way I should. Okay? Want yeah. more maturity of study. Because when you read stuff, you just read a whole chapter. Just don't scrap anything, you know, and, and that Paul's written. And read the whole chapter. It's amazing. You get through it pretty fast. You get an awful lot of information on it. A lot of wonderful things. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 through 30. Let's read that. Do you believe it? In the justification, you know, the very resurrected justification. To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Oh, two, three. Uh, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. He did it all. He did it all. Mm -hmm. So if you're here, guess what? You were predestined. Guess what? You're justified. Guess what? He called you. All of us that are in this room were involved in religion at one point or another and couldn't find the truth. We knew there was something more. There was something eating at our souls. There was something that didn't quite connect. There was an unhappiness. There was a disconnect. There was an unpleasure. There was an angst in your soul. And you kept searching. And when you understand the word rightly divided, and it all opens up to you, and you thank God for the joy you have in understanding his relationship to you, it's pretty amazing stuff. Yes. I was real young. I mean, I got into it. Into I, I was saved when I, I was about 12, Halloween night, actually. <laughs> um, but I, didn't, I, I was saved, but I did not understand my position in Christ or anything no. else. So I was about 16 or 17. Yeah. I got into the right church. I want to make a comment about on whom he justified, then he also yep. glorified. And in Ephesians 1.13, it talks about uh, those who first trusted Christ, uh, that uh, they uh, were to the praise of his glory. In other words, salvation comes with praise and glory. And uh, he also glorified this. And we read it in 1 Thessalonians 1.7, it talks about the, the joy of the Holy Ghost. And, uh, and I, I was reminded this week, my sons were playing music or whatever, and I called it noise. Well, <laughs> it was noise. Anything that doesn't have praise to it, that goes to God, is nothing but noise in God's sight. And, um, and that's the, the horribleness of being lost. And um, being saved, uh, in other words, there's joy and glory in trusting Christ and the gospel. And I mean, it's not only that it's the darkness that's dispelled, but your life is filled with joy and praise and the music in the soul. Yep. And that's the difference. And like Huge you were difference. talking about the angst. The yep. angst is the darkness yep. and the sin and the weight. And uh, even though they have a similitude of happiness, it's not there at all. Right. Because it comes from God. It's it's a whole different world. When, when you are looking for God and you have not found him yet, you're full of misery. It's right. a difficult, painful place to be. There is no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. We are all living out what God would have us to be. Do you believe that? I wrote it there. Okay? Yeah. I mean, as crazy as all of our lives, paths have been, and, you know, mine has been pretty crazy, um, we are all living out what God would have us to be. We are all traveling down different roads, but we will all end up at the same place. We will each get there on our own unique way in time. We are called out, justified, and glorified. When we deal with tough times, we know there is the for it. Now that's a very might be. Okay, but there's a reason. God also provides a way to say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Mm -hmm. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with 
thanksgiving as we request to be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay. And he's good too because once you've done that, then you should go do all the positive stuff instead of all the negative yeah, stuff. That's a deep answer. Exactly. And that verse of scripture that you used in first lesson is one uh, six mm -hmm. it talks about you receive the word in much affliction. We're to follow Paul's example. In other words, you are gonna have affliction mm -hmm. and but you still have joy in the midst of it all. If you keep your faith up, you know, focus on Christ, there's joy and praise regardless of what's going on around you and to you. Yeah, and, and you know, you make the request known to God because we have to verbalize it in our head. Whatever we've got to say to God. I'd like this to happen. I'd like this to happen. I'd like this to happen. This is painful. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with this. And we get the peace because we've done that. Okay, the, the act of actually laying out those requests now gives us that peace because we know God's hand. Yeah. And it's the, yeah. one, it's the one solid promise He's going to give you yeah. if you ask and yeah. give it to Him. And let it be. peace because yeah. the yeses and the noes and the maybes yeah. those are going to come. But it is extremely important. Yes. He said, in the world you're going to have tribulation, but in Christ you will have peace. We don't have to just ask it, it's there. Yep. We can. It is. And uh, like you say, we do need to be praying. Yep. Because, okay, yeah, when the time is done. Okay, that's that verse that said I'm reading from the New Time that when a co worker comes to you, yes. she has a co worker that would, be, that would go crazy with everything at work. Her arm spurs is up cars and gave it to her. She and keeps she, it at her, her desk. Yeah, she's a son of God, so she's full of a lot of angst. There's no reason we should be anxious or uneasy. We can claim peace. We can. Whether we choose to or not, that's our choice. But we certainly can claim it. Okay? It's there. Okay? God also tells us where to focus if we have peace. If we are have peace. We always have a way to peace and then joy. Let's look at Philippians 4 again. This time 8 through 9. There we go. <laughs> You're already there. Somebody can read these. All right. Finally, brothers, uh -oh. whatever things are true, mm -hmm. whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, uh -huh. if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Well, he didn't say anything about anything negative there. Mm -hmm. Nine. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. <coughs> and more? And more? No, it doesn't. And it's important we read these verses and refocus on them. Because as a business owner, I worry about cash flow all the time. That's my entire life. <laughs> Make sure my employees get paid. You know? And, and we don't need to, because God has taken care of me over and over and over again. Yes. I still worry about this. So if you're not alone, you yep. quit. Exactly. I need to quit. I need to get a job. <laughs> Colossians 3, 12 to 15. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Keep going through 15. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Yes. Wonderful. Forgiving one another. You forgive others for their sake or for your own? Yeah. Oh, let it go. Oh. Yeah, it's obviously for them, but it's for you. I forgive them, I can let it go, I can move on. Okay? The waterfall will be here today. It's working its way in. It's just a feature heart study. That would be nice. Um, verse 14. And above all, put on charity. What is the other word for charity? Love. Okay? Put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To which also you're called into one body, be thankful. Paul reminds us of this stuff over and over again. Why? Because guess what? It is at the top of our mind, isn't it? We still have our worldly nature. And the last thing we worry think about is peace and God and love and focus in the right place. 
We're worried about everything else. We're worried about him doing wrong to me. We're worried about the way she treated me. We're worried about the fact that he forgot my name when he you know, introduced himself, whatever it might be. Crazy stuff, isn't it? That our minds automatically go to. Yeah. We need to shake it off. We need to stay focused in the right place. If the peace, of, peace and joy of God is not real in your life, focus back to the simple understanding of grace. Look back to the joy of your salvation when you realize God's love and grace were enough to save your soul. Do you remember that point? Yeah, 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 it's hard. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty old. It was a long time ago, but I still remember. I still remember what it did to me. Yes? Getting back to this charity, just this past week, my daughter and I were talking, and she goes, well, what is charity? And in my words, I told her that charity is giving to someone or doing something for someone and not expecting anything in return. Yep. Yep, it is. It's love. It's giving to someone. You know, and even the simplest things, we all have opportunities. You know, I go out of my way sometimes to try to listen to the people shopping in front of me. If they're having a hard time paying for the groceries, I'll step up and buy them. And, uh, sometimes, you know, I've told the story here before about Walmart. This lady was in front of me and she saw so quickly. She was about 94. I didn't know that when I talked to her. I said, wow, man. She was, yeah, I'm 94. 94. She looks, she was about 65, okay? And she was getting her pharmacy stuff at Walmart. She goes, well, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. I said, oh, I just stepped up and said, here, put it in my car. Transaction happened. We kept talking. Walked out to the parking lot. Looked at the receipt. $119. Long <laughs> <laughs> suffering. Yeah. I'm so glad I did it, but I was like, whew. I was surprised. I was surprised. I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 she did have some expensive parts, too. I got numbers that afternoon. So we focus back on the joy and the peace of our salvation. Do that. When you're getting anxious, stop for a minute and say, wait a minute, where do I stand with God? You know, I got another 40 years here. I got another 20 years here. I got another 60 years or whatever it is. And that's it. From there, I've got eternity. Eternity. That's a whole, I can't even understand it. I can't even grasp it. I can, I can grasp that the last 59 years have gone by like that. Okay? Getting you all that in the back row there. You got the point. But the thing is, I've got eternity. What a great place to be, you know? Trust me, when I'm gone here, you can cry over well, my lack of humor. You won't have any jokes anymore. But I'm going to be in a better place. Okay? I'll be in a much better place. Uh, Paul says it best. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 21. And this is when maturity comes. That's what being in this class is all about. That's what we study is all about. Listen to what he says here. If Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be, also, may, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and depth and height. Wow, what a great thing. Just a second. Understanding. Understanding. I got a 10 minute signal, got it. Okay. We don't want to run a tape in the back of the room. <laughs> Go ahead. And to know the love of Christ, which passes all understanding, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And to him that is able to receive him abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And to him be glory in the church, by the might of Jesus, throughout all ages, and the world without end. Great. Verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with the fullness of God. The more we know, the more joy we have. The more we understand, the deeper it gets. It's like a, it's like a, a, a rope. It gets woven together. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And it should go for our maturity, too. The more we know, the more peaceful we should be with others. The more long-suffering we should be with others. The more we should share out of love what we understand instead of going, hey, you got it wrong, buddy. Here's what it is. Okay? It's so true. Oh, growing in grace. Growing in grace. There we go. And that never stops. It never stops. No matter how much you know, no matter where you're coming from. What we do for God must reflect his love. It is the only true motive. Period. That's the only motive for doing any of this stuff. If you do it for anything else, you're in the wrong place. When was the last time you sat quietly and let the love of the grace of your move in your soul? Let the power of God sink into your soul. We all need to slow down and let God be the center of our lives. We are no longer strangers, but in God's family. Like at Thanksgiving, you know, you all get together. Yeah, let's pull a couple of chairs up here. It's very important, okay? Now is the time to do this. I've got rid of some of my own notes here. You have to plan to make this happen. Find a little time in your life 
I don't care if it's getting up an extra 30 minutes earlier, 20 minutes earlier in the morning, and focus on this stuff for a bit. Focus on the joy of your of salvation. Spend some time realizing where you're at, studying, reading your Bible, but mostly with the heart of focus in the right place. Really important to do that. Ephesians chapter 2, 19 and 20 says, Now therefore we are no more strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Do you believe that you're part of the family? Do you realize that in the body of Christ, we all got different jobs, we all do different things, it's easy for me to get up here and talk, it's other people can do other things or whatever it is, we all have things we can do. But as a member of the body of Christ, I am here for eternity. Nothing's going to take me out of it. Nothing's going to change for me. I am here. It's done. It's finished. So what a great place to be. There should be no fear. There should be no pain. Yeah, we're going to temporarily re react to things. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Stop. Oh, my God. What did I just say? Oh, my God. Okay. Focus back in the right place. All right? It's important that we do that. It's important that we focus on these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 20. Okay. Are all one member? Uh, hard to get there. Um, the point being that we are all part of one another, and each of us has a place, and each of us does different things, and each of us needs each other. And it's wonderful to see this room full of people who are here to understand and grow in grace, because that's what it's all about. We all have an important place in God's family. Back to what I've got written down. What we have to feel is what do we have to feel bad about, or to worry about, or to feel defeated about? God has chosen you. God is in control, and we simply play out the master plan. Isn't that a wonderful place to be? I've got this next one circle. We are to act on God's behalf to reach a lost world. We have been given grace to deliver a message to the unsearchable riches, riches that are in Christ. Are we doing it? What is your focus? Okay. Is your focus to help others see the love of Christ? Is your focus to do wonderful things so people ask you, why do you do that? Why is he like that? Why does she do that? Why are they always like that? Oh, my, they crazy. They always got rose. I, I actually have a, a pastor come down to me one time and said, Dave, your glasses are always rose-colored. I said, you're right. They are, okay? And I had a conversation with anybody here that was Assembly of God or something. It was Church of Christ. He was, he was upset because I was so oh, optimistic. What other ways to be? Okay? We've all been through problems. We all have temporary setbacks. We all have misery in our lives. But you know what? We're in a great place. Ephesians chapter 3, we'll finish up here. Actually, two more sets of verses I'm going to read. Ephesians 3, 8, and 9. And to me... Who am the least among all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches in Christ. That's our job. To try to help others see that. Help others go from crucified, buried, and resurrected, which is where the church is, and take it to justification, complete justification because of that, and stand justified in the body of Christ, perfect before God. That's a hard thing for religion to get to. That's our job, okay? Joy, peace, and love are elements of our standing with God that we should rule in our lives. When we are faced with decisions, these elements should affect our, our direction. God set the example for us by giving grace freely. <clears throat> we should always be motivated by it. And some of you read these last verses here. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21. We read two of them already before, but let's continue on through all four of them. All things are of God, which are the promise to yourself by Jesus Christ, and have given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not including their trespasses on the world, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Look at that. That's the result of what he just talked about. Keep going. Now that we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray that Christ said, Be ye reconciled. The message is written in one of my favorites, that we might be made the righteousness. God of him. So he takes our sin and imparts with us his righteousness. That's a pretty good deal. Sure is. I can't get any better. Thank God and keep your focus and train in the right place. Join peace in your life. It's as simple as that. Let's close with the word of prayer. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we <coughs> thank you that we can study, take this stuff to heart, place it back in the forefront of our minds, keep us focused in the right place. We'd ask that you give each of us the opportunity this week to share this with somebody and somehow. Have them ask us a question about something. We might be able to share the love of Christ in some way, in some manner. It might be a deed. It might be a, a discussion. It may be any number of things. But give us each that opportunity. And then give us the power and the focus to, to share it directly 